Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I'm gossiping. This is the Rumor Report. I mean, I guess we're on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. I tell everybody all the time, 50 is somebody you don't want to owe money to. Now, Fifth recently filed a paperwork in California in an attempt to force Tierra Marie to pay the $50,000 balance she ho- owes him after losing her lawsuit against him in 2019. Does not matter how much it is. Does not matter how you are in life right now. If you owe Fifth money, he wants his money. Oh, uh, 50 Cent really the big worm of this whole industry, you know what I'm saying? Because it's not about the money, it's about the principle, okay? And I know it's a lot of folks out there who say, man, you know, 50 Cent is a multimillionaire. You know, he shouldn't be stressing that person for $50,000. If they went to court Mm -hmm. and the person lost in court and they owe, they should pay. They gotta pay. I mean, it's just that simple. (laughs) They gotta pay. It's the law. It's the law, guys. You gotta pay and gals, but you know how law. you know how petty that is because I'm sure the attorney fees cost more than the fifty thousand dollars. That's all. I don't think there's anything petty about it at all. I love it. You take somebody to court, you win a lawsuit, and once the judgment is um you know issued, they should have to pay. I don't think that's petty at all. It's the law. They gotta pay. It's due process. He went through he, he went through the proper procedures. That's not petty. Now uh, I seen fifty last night. Uh, at a steakhouse, Empire Steak in the city. Did he pay the bill? He definitely paid the bill. and I ordered Another every- reason why he needs his money. <laughs> I ordered everything on that menu last night. It was a Branson dinner. Uh, and when 50 walked in, he lost, you could tell that he lost a lot of weight. He actually lost 43 pounds. And when I first seen him, the first thing I said was, you want that on Zimpic? And he said, hell no. He said, I'm not on Ozempic. He said, I actually lost it by working out. And he said, the people that are on Ozempic, usually they have a big head. And weak knees, and that's how you could tell that they're well, on Ozempic. That's what Kevin Gates said yesterday. He said everybody that's on Ozempic uh, got a big head. But that, that you can you can you can tell an Ozempic uh, gold medalist. That's what I call them, Ozempic gold medalist, and mm-hmm. then Ozempic silver medalist, Ozempic bronze medalist, because some people it works uh, for better than others. Right, here's him talking about it. I was talking about weight loss. I was in the gym. I was working the fuck out, man. They said it's Ozempic. I was running. I was running. I was doing what I had to do. You see me on tour. I ran around. I lost. I was 253 pounds. I came down. I'm 210 right now, right? Ow. So how you feel about it? You tell me how you feel about it later, right? Why y'all acting like 50 Cent hasn't always been a health buff, though? Mm -hmm. Like, we didn't see him. A lot of y'all weren't first introduced to him uh, uh, hanging upside down doing crunches. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay? (laughs) Running on the treadmill. Mm -hmm. That whole video in the club was a workout plan. Right. Now, also, while we were uh, at dinner, he was telling me about YFN Lucci's lawyer. I didn't know he said this, uh, so this is why I'm saying it now. Uh, but I didn't know that uh, he actually recommended YFN lawyers, uh, Lucci's lawyer. And they said the first day in court, YFN Lucci's mom called him and was very nervous because the first day of court, I guess he, the lawyer was stuttering and really didn't have it together. But 50 said, trust me, I've used him before, and he's a great attorney, and he was the one that got wife and Lucci's uh, term dropped down to I think he only have to serve three years in prison and he only has three and a half months left. Drew Finlan is one of the lawyers, right? And I told I told wife and use this dude, right? Mm-hmm. I got him to use him. He used him. I said, yo, listen. Good lawyer, man. I'm telling you this and that, right? And I started feeling shaky about this because he told me the first day they came in there he was stuttering. And his mother said he was stuttering 50 This is your shit. You told him to abuse this I said, oh, shit. I started feeling crazy. I started feeling crazy. They talking about an offer for 20 years. Then 20 years go to an offer. And I go, Drew, is this real? Like 20 years? And he said, don't worry about it. I got it. You know, everything will be all right. Next thing you know, 20 years turn into four months. You need a lawyer? You need a lawyer? My you need Drew Fenley. <laughs> well, 50 just made Drew hot. Yeah. Okay, Drew going to be $5,000 an hour now. <laughs> Maybe more than that. So, uh, salute to 50 Cent. Now, 21 Savage was on Club Shay Shay with Shannon Sharp, and he, they talked about a lot. Great interview. They talked about uh, him possibly signing to T.I. when they first started. I had T.I. on the podcast. T.I. said, you asked him for a million dollars, and he said no, because he said that I would have to take more from you. He was still trying to sign me, though. T.I. is a cheap as hell. <laughs> he gonna try to... <laughs> but I did. He... He sent me an offer. Yeah. And I, my counter offer was, I want a million. Right. And he was like, I'm going to have to take so much from you in return. Right. That it ain't even worth, it ain't even going to be worth the million in the future. So he actually saved you from yourself. Facts. Yeah. I look up to T.I. Because T.I. one of them, he rich as a but he tight as hell, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't gotten a chance to watch that conversation yet. Uh, I first heard that conversation on Expeditiously with T.I. and 21 Savage. I, I thought it was a super solid thing for 
T.I. to do because you know how many people take advantage that's right. of, of artists in that situation? Oh, you, that's all you wanted a million? And now I own I own you? <laughs> yeah, I own your publishing, you know? I own everything. Yeah, you're the right. The fact T.I. didn't do that says a lot about Tip. So salute to Tip always. He also talks about being shot on his 21st birthday. I had my son the same year I got shot. So that was 2013. Right. I was 20. Take us back to that date. Do you remember anything about that day? That day was my birthday. Okay. So I was trying to like book a hotel room so we could have like a kickback and shit. Okay. And in one of my cars, I had speakers in the trunk. So he needed one of mine and he was like, shit, I'm gonna just give you one of mine. When I, when I, whenever I go buy a new one, I don't feel like going up there now. We was trying to get the, he was gonna get the hotel room in his name cause I ain't got no ID, I ain't got no license. Mm -hmm. So I needed somebody to get the room in their name. Johnny had went to my mama house and he had went to see my mama, went and see my son, and he had got to speak out the car and shit. I had pulled up at his house. He was like, ride with me somewhere right quick. I gotta handle some shit. So we made, we made, we ended up making a left or whatever. We ended up pulling up or whatever. And like a nigga just jumped in the back seat and just was like, get yeah, up type shit. And a whole bunch of just started happening. Boom, 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 boom. Wow, it was Damn. 21st birthday. Yeah, I wonder if, you know, uh, a brother like 21 has, has ever dealt with the trauma of that situation, like really mm -hmm. dealt with it, like sat down and talked to somebody about it and tried to really, you know, find some healing in that situation. Cause that's not one of those things that just happens to you and you move on, you'll forever mm -hmm. be triggered by that. Not only did you get hit six times, I believe he said his, his homeboy died. He passed away, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. come on, man. Yeah, and it, if you ever see 21, he, he moves militant and I'm sure that is still stuck with him. He don't play. When 21 moves around the city, he don't play. Uh, also, he talks about uh, broke parents being better than rich parents. Now, like with my kids, I be feeling like I don't be doing all the way my job because of my job. Right. So I be trying to like balance that out, like trying to like, it's like you you work to re receive, to gain all the success and all the good shit. I feel like the best parents, in my opinion, is parents that don't got it all. I feel like broke parents are, are better than rich parents, mm -hmm. in my opinion, because when you broke, you got way more time type shit. So you there for like a lot of the like, yeah, gifts and matter, but they don't matter at the same time. Sometimes all the kid needs is time. Facts. Your time. I get what he's trying to say. He, he's basically trying to say he's looking for a work-life balance. I don't agree with that statement, though, because it's not about it either or, because broke parents don't have that much time either because they be busting their ass. Absolutely. Broke parents usually got to have two and three jobs you know, just just to just to have the basic necessities. You Correct. know what I mean? Just to keep a little food on the table, just to keep a roof over their head. You know, like I I don't uh, agree with that statement that I, broke parents have right. more time. No, I guess uh, nah. what he was trying to say is parents that have more time, he feels are, are the better parents, and I agree. If you're there, he more, said he's looking for work life balance. That's yeah. essentially what he's saying. He's looking for work life balance. Right. If That's you're it. there more, you're there to talk, to, to to have conversations, to teach, to provide, to be things that other people can't be. You know, because a lot of times. What raised us? Grandparents, because our parents are working. What raised us? T television. Yeah, but my grandmama Video was games. working too. <laughs> just, just like like what I, I used to my get. My grandmama was I used, tired. To, I used to get off. I used to get off uh, school. This is when you, you could be six, seven years old and get off the bus by yourself. Mm -hmm. And I used to get off the bus, go to my grandmother's house. My grandmother was a lunch lady, already ready, intermediate school. Mom's going to South Carolina was happening. And mm -hmm. she used to come home. And then uh, my mom would come home later after her because she was a school teacher. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, yo, everybody's working. I, I, all 21 is saying you need work-life balance, but I don't agree with the broke parents nah. have more time. Broke, yeah, when you are financially trying to make ends meet, which most people in America are, right. you work in two and three jobs. Right. You know? It's time. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. People do want more time. Everybody wants more time. But I don't believe that, you know, broke parents have more time than rich parents. Yeah, no, I don't, know. I don't agree with that mm -hmm. either. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. Now, when we come back, we got front page news. Teslin Figaro will be joining us. And then Brandon Marshall and Cam Newton will be joining us. All right, so don't go anywhere. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.